to be praised. How shall I be saved from my enemies? You know the Lord. Bless him, and bless him be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, yes, you know the Lord. Bless him be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Yes, you know the Lord. Blessed be the rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. Did you know the Lord? Blessed be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Yes, you know the Lord. Bless him be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Be exalted, the Lord living. And blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Be exalted, the Lord living. And blessed be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Be exalted, the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Thank God for Jesus Christ. He's allowed us to come together one more time to worship him in spirit and in truth. Good to be in the house of the Lord. If you're happy and you know it. Oh, y'all don't sound, y'all no, y'all no, no, no. No, don't, don't go with the late stuff. Y'all not happy and you don't know it. Or you're happy and you don't know it, amen. Know something though, amen. All right, all right. Um, I'm gonna try something a little new. Um, I'm gonna try to hurry it up. <laughs> amen. 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 I want you to meet me at Romans chapter 3 and verse number 21. I'm turning over a new leaf. Amen. I got a lot of leaves, though. Amen. Amen. Now, if, if, if y'all listen slow now, it's going to take longer. So y'all got to listen fast. Um, I, 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 am, I am one who uh, extremely uh, wants to do my best and uh, what that means for me is I'm always trying to uh, look to get better, amen, and uh, I recognize that uh, I don't have it all together, amen. I know I might look like it, but I don't, amen, so uh, I want to be together better, and I believe the longer you walk with the Lord, you can't help but get better. Uh, if you've already arrived, amen, uh, if you already have attained all there is to attain, then God bless you. I would suggest that you write a book, because we all want to know. Uh, but uh, I, I believe that uh, if, you, if you walk with the Lord, you're going to find places in your life uh, where you need to be better. And that's what redemption is all about. And I want to invite your attention to Romans 3. I'm going to spend the next four weeks in this passage, and I'm just going to give you one point. And I'm serious. I'm not going to even give you my other three points. I'm going to make you come back next time to hear it. So I just want to talk to you about one little piece of verse in this passage, and then uh, the message will be yours. The Bible says in Romans 3, beginning at verse number 21, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now, I, just before we, we get a little deeper, I want you to know that Paul is saying that God's righteousness is uh, apart from the Mosaic law, and it is at this time, the time he's writing it, and this time here today, uh, being witnessed by the Old Testament. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, the law, uh, 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 the first five books of the Bible can prove that God's righteousness is going to be open to everybody right now. Right. 
Then not only that, the prophets, we can prove by looking at the prophets that God's righteousness was not just back there, but God's righteousness is being proved to us right now. So Paul is saying, I got book, chapter, and verse on the fact that God's righteousness is being revealed apart from the law right now. Now, y'all better say amen to that because that means we get to be saved. Uh, If God didn't do that, you and I would be in trouble. Amen. So that's an amen point. But that's not what we're going to deal with uh, this morning. Uh, Verse 22 says, even the righteousness of God, watch this, through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. So I want you to watch this. What's going to separate us, Brother Barry, from those in the street and those in the house is faith. I want you to watch this. We believe it is based on our faith in Christ Jesus. It is based on the faith that we have that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life that sets us apart. And God's righteousness now is available to all of us who have faith in Christ. This is where I want to park out this morning. The Bible says, for there is no difference for all, for all have sinned. Now, 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 all, not y'all, all all have sinned. And watch this. That word all go with the second clause. All have sinned and all fall short. Anybody know what it means to come up short? Oh, y'all know nothing about coming up short. Come on now. When you come up short, amen, you need some help. You need somebody to make up the difference when you come up short. Amen? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through, this is our theme, the redemption that is where? In Christ Jesus. You want to be redeemed? It's positional. You got to be in the right position. And that position is in Christ Jesus. Can I say that again? That position is in Christ. Now, you can want redemption and not be in Christ and be in trouble. There's some folk in the street to tell you they want to be saved. Amen. Tupac wanted to know, does heaven have a ghetto? There's some folk in the street who want salvation. But salvation is found in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. Just going to preach in a couple weeks here now. All right. Whom God set forth, here's a good old-fashioned church word for you, King James word, as a propitiation or as an atonement. Jesus' blood paid the price to appease God's wrath against sin. So the reason why God don't hold your sin against you no more is because Christ died and spilt his blood. That's going to preach in a couple of weeks too now. Watch this. We, we have this through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in God's forbearance, he passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and justified of the one who has faith in Jesus. So, Forgot to put my transitions in. I'm sorry. For the next few moments, I want to speak from the subject. That's me. That's me. And when you see yourself in the sermon, just say, that's me. (laughs) While studying the topic of reconciliation, I noticed that there are some who simply cannot come to a place of forgiveness or unity. Anybody say that's me? Oh, anybody want to be admit that that's them? Amen. We learn that there are many obstacles that Satan places in our way that keep us from reconciliation. Our pride, our lust, that's me. Our hurt feelings, that's me. Have and will keep us from getting right with each other. 
There is a popular quote that says, if you want to get to know a person first, walk a mile in their shoes. This quote conveys that empathy gives insight into the other person's heart. Dictionary.com defines empathy as the intellectual identification with or vicarious experiencing of the feelings, thoughts, or attitudes of another. In other words, if we don't see or imagine what life is like for the other person, we will never relate to them, thus making dealing with them a tall order. Amen. That's me. Typically, our minds are so narrow that we only see things through our own perspective. That's me. Within our own minds, our thinking is always correct. That's me. Our actions are always humble. That's me. Our speech is always seasoned with salt. Our body language is always welcoming. Our tone is always in key. Our reasoning is always valid. We always do it right. We always get a hit. And we are not cognizant of our misses. We don't truly see our mistakes, our mishandling, our misdealing, our mistreatment, our misconduct, these are misses, our misgovernance our mismanagement, our misusing, our miscalculating, and our misjudgment. We love to share stories where we are the good guy, never missing the mark. Our prayer requests are often for the other people who do us wrong. We don't seem to play a part in the matter. However, when we do, we seem to be the innocent bystander who was simply trying to serve the Lord when someone else came along and messed it up. Paul would tell us that we should not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Paul would go on to say, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Paul would tell the Galatian church, if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But I'm reminded that King David, while passing judgment on the rich man in Nathan's story in 2 Samuel chapter 12, was actually condemning himself. Why? Because sometimes you are the man. That means that we have a part in the matter. We add to the destruction of things. We are the problem. We have the issue. We stir up the mess. We hold the key to reconciliation. It's us, not the other person, not your family's fault. It's yours. It's not your classmate's fault. It's yours. It's not your co-worker's fault. It's yours. It's not the congregation's fault. It's yours. You may be thinking to yourself, how do you know it's me? Well, we know that it is you and me because Paul says we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. There's not one person in here who's good enough to stand up and pound their chest and act like they never messed up. There's not one who is righteous. Why? Because David said there is none righteous like him. No, not. Come on, that's sacred selection, verse number 47. Am I right about it? The book of Romans is the most theologically rich letter in all of the New Testament. It's chock full of essential teaching that serves as foundational, foundational, foundational principles for every believer. For Paul, the gospel is the key to our salvation. The son of the living God came and lived with out sin. He came teaching. He came discipling. He came healing and then sacrificing his life on the cross of Calvary. He rose from the grave holding all power in his hand and those who believe in him and own him submit themselves to him by obedience to the gospel. Paul strategically writes to the church explaining to them one how we say two why God saved us and three 
how we are justified by faith. Listen, one of the things that I've learned early on in my ministry, uh, Brother Crosby, is that I spend most of my time trying to convince Christians that they already saved. Oh, y'all missed that. I spend most of my time trying to let you know that God has already saved you. Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood. When you baptize into Christ, you're covered by the blood. We are hidden. Brother King read this morning, Colossians chapter 3, verse number 2. If your life is hid in Christ from God, God don't see your sin because you covered by the blood of the Son of the living God. What does that mean, preacher? God is already saved us. The problem is we don't live like we believe that. We believe we got to try out every single day, proving to God we want to be saved and afraid to serve, afraid to speak, afraid to say. Why? Because Satan has tricked us, duped us into believing that Jesus' blood can't cover your sin. Amen, Walls. Uh, and so we spend mo- I spend most of my time trying to convince people God loved them so much that he gave his only begotten son trying to prove to people that when you are in Christ salvation and eternal life is yours for the enjoyment right now not when you die we are being saved right now y'all realize that Listen, listen, I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, Brother Tyson not preaching that you can go out and act a fool and God just going to look over your sin. Shame on you. If you died to Christ, you shouldn't be acting like a fool anymore. But I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that we don't baptize people that have died to Christ. We baptize people that are convinced of the doctrine of the church of Christ. And because they're only convinced of the doctrine of the church of Christ and not convicted enough to change their ways and die to sin, that we just baptize a the person. They come up dripping wet and they still want to do all the things. That they ever did. And then we look up and wonder why the church is so worldly. Mm-hmm. And I ain't talking about worldly by what you got on. Some of us are worldly as all get out by our thoughts, by how we do our business. Amen, Walls. I, w- I, was, I was preaching. I was preaching one. Uh, I won't tell you the city because you're trying to figure out who it was. I was preaching someplace. And, uh, you know, uh, when they have a visiting minister come to town, they put all the ministers together for lunch or for breakfast. And they try to sit down. You just shoot the breeze with other preachers, try to encourage them. Mr. Tyson, we're going to have this breakfast. We want you to come to it. We're going to bring all the uh, preachers together in the city. And we want you just to, you know, uh, give them a little word of encouragement. And we're going to fellowship. We're going to go home. I said, all right. So I stood up. You know, we ate breakfast, had good grits and sausage and everything. And uh, <laughs> breakfast was over. Came to the mic, brought my Bible. And I said, you know, brother, and I'm, you know, I'm just doing my thing, right? I'm saying and speaking, had a little lesson. And I said, listen, um, we got to do more to reach, to reach everybody in the church. Mm-hmm. Got to do more. I said, the problem, and this is what get me in trouble here. The, the problem is we, we don't want to offend certain people in the church. You know who those people are? We don't want to offend the people that's diehard Church of Christ ain't going nowhere. Right. I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> There's some of us, we so diehard, your preacher could be plumb crazy, you ain't going to lead the church. <laughs> I, I come in here next Sunday with a Speedo on, that's all I got on. <laughs> you might run out the auditorium, but you ain't going to lead the church. Am I right about it? You just gonna chalk that up to me being crazy. You ain't gonna lead the church. You might not, not, not the new babes might, but y'all old heads. Y'all ain't, am I right about it? Y'all, y'all ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't going nowhere. You know why? Because you know the truth. And you convict the truth, and you know there's a difference between me being crazy and the truth. So you still gonna be obedient to God regardless of whether or not I'm obedient. So the problem is we try to please those people who ain't going nowhere. All right. But the person who is a spiritual baby who don't know better, we don't mind telling them to sit down and shut up. Right. Oh, y'all missing this. Y'all missing this. So I said, listen, we got to do better. We got to do better. If, if we want our church to grow, we're going to we're gonna have to connect with our young people. We're going to have to connect with people who think differently than us. And we got to allow them to come to the table and allow them to have an opinion and it be okay. I ain't saying we got to do it, but we got to at least listen to them. We got to let them in our meetings. We got to let them in our decision making. We got to let them in ministries. We got to let them on the team. We got to, amen, we got to do that. So, you know, I thought I was doing good. His brother came up, man, in the middle, in the middle. I was done, any questions, and I hate to ask that, any questions? 
brother said, well, Brother Tyson, these young brothers don't pull up their pants. And you know, they look like a bum walking around with the sacking. And I said, yeah, I agree. You know, I wear a belt. You know, I, I understand what you're talking about. I'm, you know, I hear you. He says, but so, you know, if, if I was, you know, a supervisor on a job and they came into my office looking like that, I wouldn't hire them. And I don't think we ought to let those brothers in the church serve and do anything because they don't look right. I said, well, you know, that, that's a good point. So you know what the problem with that point is? Jesus died for the brothers who need to pull up their pants. Amen. And if this ain't the place for them, Amen. where is? Right. So the problem is, in the business corporate world, your model is the model. Right. But that's the business model. Yes, sir. Jesus is about kingdom business. Amen. And kingdom business invite the tax collector, the sinner, the skank, the prostitute, the whole cake, amen. The, the womanizer, the wife beater, the children abuser, the cheater on their taxes, the selfish, the prideful, the, amen. That, that, that's, that's Jesus' kingdom business model. I said, so your thinking is, if we use your model, amen, then about 60% of the young men can't come to church. Now, what did I go and say that for? <laughs> Long story short, breakfast was over. <laughs> Long story short. Now, if y'all want to know the rest of the story, I got to tell y'all later time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Romans is a declaration of God's plan of salvation. He planned to save us. He planned to justify us. He planned to make us right with him. He planned to sanctify us and set us aside for a special purpose. He planned to love us even when we are unlovable. He demonstrates to us his righteousness. He planned to include all people who believe, both Jew and Gentile, under the covenant of Abraham. To put it simply, our understanding of how much God has done for us is proclaimed in the Roman letter. Now, this is my point for the next four weeks. Now, this is the point out of Romans 3, 21 through 26. God has proven his righteousness in saving sinners who believe by justifying, redeeming, and atoning us from our sin. Right. This is what God does now. He saves the sinner. Yes, sir. Watch this. He's righteous enough to save the sinner Amen. who believe by doing three things. Justifying, making them right. Redeeming them, saving them, and buying them back. And atoning, that's propitiation, from our sin. That's the point of my message. So this morning I want to talk to you about God's people. God's people, real short, we're going to be done. There are various types of people. We range in shape, color, age, background, political affiliation, blood type, and custom. We have different fingerprints and our DNA is as unique to us as everything else. Yet, we are all bound together by our propensity to sin. Amen. For as many people that there are, even in this room, there are as many sins mm -hmm. that are committed. Paul is in the middle of his explanation of how Jews are just as guilty before God as Gentiles are. The Jews had a difficult time accepting God's grace because they believed that obeying the law was the only way to please God. They could not accept God's free grace and salvation and would rather return to the observance of the Mosaic law depending on circumcision as proof that they belong to God. Subsequently, the Jewish Christians looked with disdain at Gentile converts. They thought that in some way that they were better in the sight of God. Paul says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all acted contrary to the will and law of God. We have all engaged in wrongdoing and have messed up somewhere along the line. We fail. In our true purpose, we miss the mark and we err in our ways before the holy and living God. Amen. The Bible says that we fall short of the glory of God. Amen. 
to fall short implies that we are lacking in some way. The Greek word means to lack an advantage or to fail to attain. Simply put, we don't measure up to the splendor and quality of God. Amen. That's your sermon. Woo, y'all see that? <laughs> now I got to illustrate my point. <laughs> and we'll get out of here. Please be careful not to think that spiritually you're better than somebody else. Amen. Ike, you going to come help me? Come here. It's too pick. It's good for picking your teeth after you eat beef. <laughs> All that too pick up. Many of us just like that toothpick. We're newly born in Christ. All right. Which means we come up short, don't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, just because you baptized don't mean you don't feel like cussing her out. Yeah. Hey Amen, walls. Yeah. Act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> just because we come to church don't mean we don't run the risk of losing our religion on the parking lot. Amen, hey man, walls. Amen. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Hold it up there now. I ain't like that. I want the people to see how big it is. And we fall short. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. But you know the problem is, when you grow a little bit, you have a tendency to think you better uh -huh. than the one who falls short. Uh -huh. You going to help me out, Charles? Come on. Now, Charles didn't grow. And he a little, well, he is taller. Ooh, Charles has grown. <laughs> Spiritually. And, and, Isaiah don't measure up to Charles. Y'all see this? And the problem is, we have folk that's only as big as a coffee stirrer talking about folks that's only big as a tooth. Oh, y'all gonna hold that up, I. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Let me tell you what happened. You've been in the church two days longer than somebody else, and you think that you better than the new babe. Can I show y'all something else? We have a tendency to look down our nose to people who have not been baptized. Right. Half the time, they got more spiritual sense than we do, and we've been saved half our life. Yeah. Amen. It, it's, folk, it's folk in this room, watch this, been sitting here for years, mm -hmm. hearing the gospel, preached and taught, yes, know the books of the Bible, know why we commune. They better give us I said they better give us than some of us who know better. Right. They finally come and put on Christ in baptism, and then we send them to the kindergarten class to learn the Bible and the gospel and teach them why we come to church on Sunday when they've been here the last 25 Sundays. <laughs> but because we've been saved a yes, little bit longer than them, Amen, walls. Amen. Y'all didn't got quiet on me. See, y'all didn't got quiet. Who's that over there? Turk? Which Turk is that? Where your brother at, Turk? All right. Come on. I'm going to take uh, Jonah first. Jonah grow up. He been here at Crenshaw for 20 years. <laughs> Charles don't measure up to Jonah. Ike, you just in trouble. He don't measure up to Charles. Are y'all missing this? We don't want to hear Isaiah because he don't really know that much. Uh -huh. Bump on down the line. Charles, you just got trumped by Jonah. You see that? Because Jonah know the ways of Crenshaw. He was here back, back in the day. <laughs> because he been here back in the day, he know more than Charles, so you don't measure up. I want to see y'all see how this works. What happens in the church is we give more credence to this person mm -hmm. than we do to this person uh -huh. and even that person. But y'all do realize everybody in this room somewhere along this measuring stick. Y'all right. see that? Yeah. But we think because we measure up against him and we can tell him what to do right. and his opinion don't mean nothing and that he ain't nothing. And he turns around because he gets it from him and looks down his nose at this guy. Why? Because he's mistreated by this guy and he only feel good about himself when he can turn around and tell. Oh, y'all missing this. Y'all not 
I told y'all the sermon's over. I'm just illustrating it. Y'all should be happy. The sermon's over, y'all. All right. All right. Y'all see how this work? Come on, John. But John's an old head. John been here for, woo, he been a member of the church half his life. He got the gray hair to prove it. And John is better than the one who been here 20 years. See, he was here when, when Crenshaw first started. Hold that up. Y'all see this? And, 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 and watch this. Isaiah would never question John because he a new baby, and John been here since 62. <laughs> Are y'all missing that? Don't you miss that? You only been here since 92. You was baptized two years ago, and you just dried off. <laughs> so we have a tendency to look down our nose at one another. Paul says, though, we all have sin. All right. I need some help. Sharif, you going to come help me? All right. Sharif represents the elders, amen, those that have attained spiritual maturity, yeah. amen. You know the ones that's been serving all their life, right. who lead us in the church. Yeah. And I know Jonah ain't going to tell me nothing. Yeah. And I know John can't tell me nothing either. Yeah. And Charles, you and Isaiah, y'all can just forget about it. Now I need some help. Ellis, can, little Ellis, little Ellis, can you help me out? Come on, man. Come stand right here and hold this for me. Can you hold this for me? I appreciate it. Y'all give Ellis some love. All right, y'all. All right, you stand there hold it. Don't move. Don't move now. Don't move. All right. Now, we start measuring ourselves against one another. This person we treat like they know no sin. Hmm. Y'all do realize that the older you get, the looser your lips get. Because see, your filter, you don't use your filter as often. <laughs> Amen. Why? This ain't, ain't trying to be funny. This truth. You speak what's on your mind because you might forget it, so you go on and say it. <laughs> and Sister Davis, because I love you, I'm going to let you talk to me any old kind of way because I love you. But that don't mean you don't offend. Yeah. Even though he don't measure up. And he don't measure up, and you sure enough don't measure up, and you can forget about it because you just dried off. <laughs> but you know what the problem is with all of that? Mike, did your back hurt? You got hit yesterday in a football game? You can't play? Can you come play? Can you take it for the team? Come on. Come on, Mike. I need some help. The problem with all of that is Jesus never tells us to measure ourselves with one another. Amen. You know who he tells us to measure ourselves with? Him. John chapter 13, verse number 34, Jesus says, even as I have loved you, you love one another. Amen. Don't compare yourself to each other. Compare yourself to me. Amen. Now, I'm going to show y'all what Jesus has done. Right. Oh, y'all didn't miss this. Let me show, can I show you the righteousness and holiness of God? Can I, can I show you how, no matter how old you get, no matter how great your head get, you still are nothing in the sight of God. You think you're doing something, you still fall short. Yeah. You still don't measure up. So the question then becomes, how in the world am I going to go from toothpick to God? All right. Somebody go, Julius, can you hold this? Me? Somebody going to help me with this? How can I go from toothpick to God, right? right. Now, I'm going to show you how you go from toothpick to God. It ain't by your observance of the law. The reason why is the law only show us how bad we really are. Amen. The law can't justify you. The law can't make you right. The law can't cover you in grace. The law just says you broke it. All right. That's all the law can do. So for the new baby who just got wet, he break a lot of laws. Uh -huh. How in the world God still love him? Uh -huh. Even when you start growing, you break yes. a lot of laws. And even though you've been here 20 years, I've been here 20 years, you break a lot of laws. Yes. But just because you've been here 40 years don't mean you don't break yes. a lot of laws. And I know you have ascended to the throne of sainthood in the church of Christ. You still fall short Amen. of the glory of God. Amen. 
for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, preacher, how then does God make us enough to reach his standard. He did it by sending Christ Jesus to die on the cross for our sin and he justifies us by making us enough. Oh, y'all missed this. I told y'all a few weeks ago, listen, y'all remember the movie? Y'all remember the movie Friday? Come on now. Uh, uh, don't act like you saved that long. Y'all remember the movie Friday? Smoke and mama send him to the grocery store. Amen. With two dollars to buy her a pack of cigarettes. Cigarettes cost two seventy-five. He looked at his mama and said, That ain't enough. His mama looked at him and said, Make it enough. That means Smokey got to go in his own pocket and come up with the difference. Oh, y'all missing this. Jesus Christ came and shed his blood as a ransom for many. And he makes up the difference when we fall short. So even when you think you've attained something, you still need the blood of Jesus Christ. Even when you've been here 40 years, you too are still in need of the grace of God. Even though you've been in the church 20 years and act like you got all the answers, you too need the salvation of God. Even though you just got baptized and you newly are added to the church, you too need the blood of Jesus Christ. And for the person to give their life to God on that day, day they too need the blood of Jesus Christ and God is going to make up the difference where you lack he going to fill in I don't know about you but that's me that's me that's me that's me that's me and when Jesus Christ gets a hold of me and the Holy Spirit get in me and God step out before me he makes me enough Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what redemption is. Redemption is God making us enough. So if you think you're going to look down your nose at the one who don't know nothing, you still need the grace of God to make you enough. I don't know about you, but that's me. I need some of God's grace because I'm always fall short. No matter how much I grow, and I won't come into completion until the Lord step out on the cloud, come back from glory to meet me in the air with the saints that have died and gone before. And then I will be made like he is like. Amen, somebody. So the invitation is yours. If you're here this morning and you act like you've been measuring up, uh, I don't know where you are along this line, but you still ain't good enough for God. You still ain't good enough for God. I don't know if you think all that in a bag of chips, but you still ain't good enough for God. I don't, you still ain't good. We all need the grace of God. Don't you act like you don't need God's grace without God. Grace, you cannot be saved. Paul says, For we are saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves or of works, lest any man should boast. It ain't about what you think you can do, but about what God has done Amen. for you. God bless you. Appreciate y'all, brothers. Appreciate y'all. All short, y'all know that, right? All right, y'all give it up for my, for my helpers. I appreciate my helpers. I'm going to show you what this looked like in the scriptures. I told you I was done. Let me give you a couple of texts. Ecclesiastes writer says, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Amen. Now, I want you to watch this. The Bible already said Abraham was good. Mm-hmm. Jonah was good. Mm-hmm. Moses was good. Yeah. But Solomon said they still ain't good enough. Right. Solomon written after all that. He said, ain't nobody on this earth walk around without sin. Not only that, but right there in Romans, when Paul is trying to convince and correct the Jews who think that by circumcision and by the law of Moses that they better, this is what he says, what then? Are we better than they, speaking of the Gentiles? Not at all, for we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is not one who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. 
They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. John would say if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive all our sins. And watch this, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the question is, do you cleanse yourself or does God cleanse you? No matter how good you might think you are, that still need to be attributed to the Lord. There is no spirit bootstraps you pull yourself up by. Mm -hmm. We all need God. Every person in this room needs God. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. Mm -hmm. And his word is not in us. You're here this morning. Message is yours. Is that you? I know it's me. Mm -hmm. And I have to fight the pride in me yes, that tells me because I went to school, mm-hmm. amen. Because yes, I got some little gray hairs on my chinny chin chin. I do. I have a lot of them right here. Boy, I tell you, I got to do something with that. <laughs> amen. <laughs> that because I've attained yes, a certain status, that I can therefore look down my nose mm-hmm. at somebody. The scriptures teach us. That all sin. Amen. And that we all fall short. Amen. So whether or not you think you're a faithful member who only makes an occasional mistake and you're better than the one who just came out the club three hours ago. Mm-hmm. We all need the grace of God Amen. to measure up in the sight of God. Amen. If you hear and you don't know Christ, the greatest gift you could have is salvation. Amen. And do you know all it takes is faith? To all who believe, Mm -hmm. your belief ought to make you do something. That's obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus came and led a sinless life and died on Calvary (coughs) for sinners like you and me. Scriptures teach us that they buried him in a grave. Joseph of Arimathea's tomb is where they buried him. And early on Sunday morning, Mary and the girls came to prepare his body for the long burial. The Bible says the rock in front of the tomb was rolled away. And it's interesting that one account has Mary going in and they see an angel. Mm-hmm. And they ask the angel, where, where is the body of Jesus? And the angel tells them, why do you look for the living among the dead? See, the God who we serve mm-hmm. is alive. Amen. There is a God and he is alive. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's who we believe. We, our God is alive. Amen. Bible says that Jesus Establish the church in Acts chapter 2. You come to him by faith. That's hearing and believing in the word of God. The scriptures teach us that we have to repent. That's change your mind. That many people in here want to follow God don't want to change. Mm. You can't do it. Amen. You can't follow God without change. Because repentance is change. Amen. You cannot follow God without change. Everybody in this room got to change from something. Brother Moore, I like the way it's been working for me. Well, it might be working for you now. But there's going to come a day, Mm -hmm. amen, where it ain't going to work no more. Mm -hmm. So you got to ask yourself, are you ready for that day? So I'll be honest with you, I'm not really living for the moment. I love the moment. I enjoy the moment. But I'm not living for the moment. I'm living for that day. So I set my parameters based on that day. Mm -hmm. Not based on what's going on around me, because today I can feel good, tomorrow I can feel bad. But I know this much, on that day, yes, sir, on that day. It's going to all be good on that day. And, and, and when the Lord called the roll and he started calling names, I want to be able to say, that's me. Yeah. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Watch this. I gave you just a few things to worry about and you took care of. All right. Now I'm going to make you ruler yes, sir. over many. Mm-hmm. If you're here and you need to come, you come by faith. After repentance, confess with your mouth that he's the Christ, the son of the living God. The Bible teaches us that we bury you in water. You come up a new creature. Paul says the old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. Remain faithful unto death and heaven will be your home. If you're here and you are a child of God, I want you to know you still need God's grace too. Because even on our best day, we're not good enough to stand before God. God makes us enough. And if you lost sight of that, 
and you need to repent. No time like the present. If you're here today and you just have a problem in your life, we're going to pray for you. Will you come? Brother Barry, will you come right now? Sweet Lord, together we stand and sing the song. Sweet chariot, come and come, come and fall to carry me home. You need Swing prayer. low, Swing low. Sweet chariot, come and come and fall. To carry me home. Bless your sister Ann. So I want you to come stand right here for me. Swing low. Sweet area. Come and oh, come you, come. and fall to carry me home.